Have you guys tested out the slant ground non-projected NGK plugs for the B9? I know it won't help injector issues, but I'm hoping it stops the grounds from melting, breaking them. Okay. Um, we are, that is actually one of the, that is a plug we are in the middle of testing, uh, a, a similar style. Um, we have a couple of options coming actually as well, uh, which are a very different style with, you know, basically they're strapless. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're working on some options there again. Um, yeah, it, nothing, no, no testing has been concluded yet. Uh, there, there, I just want to clarify, there is no spark plug that won't melt if, uh, if that if, cylinder runs because of a bad injector. Yeah, if you've got a failed injector, it's, yeah, you're not going to be in a good place. So, you know, if, if you have a, an injector that is either injecting too much fuel or not enough, especially if it's not enough, EGTs will skyrocket and Honestly, the spark plug melting is is probably the best thing that can happen in this scenario. It, it, because if, if it, 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 it is, you know, I don't know. A lot of these guys, I don't know if they know what they're asking. It's like, well, you want a super duper, you know, titanium spark plug that doesn't melt. Well, then what's the next thing that's going to melt then? A valve, the top of your piston, a ringland. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, even brisk as one of their features lists that their electrode is, e you know, melts easier than Iridium um, just because it's uh It, it should be filled. outside of the thermal range where you're getting a, a proper combustion. So, you know, melting plugs isn't great. That means that your that cylinder is now dead as far as creating combustion. But it does mean that you avoided a bigger catastrophic issue. And it just means that you need to fix your injector issue. Yeah, and hopefully get back on the road. Depending on how how severe it gets. Yeah. And yeah, injector injector. I know it's a common topic right now. Um, but in, injector diagnosis. And there's another question here. I've seen a lot of B9 RS5 S cars having issues with plugs. They are having to be replaced as early as five to eight thousand miles. From what I hear, it's an issue with the cars running lean. Have you guys looked into this to see if tunes are creating these failures? Mm -hmm. um, so well, of course, I mean we we. we tune and create these calibrations, yep. the, the file is not running. I mean, we, we, we know that we, we don't sell lean running files. Uh, in almost every case that we've seen this come up, it's related to a, a, a failed injector of some, some kind of issue. Yeah, and then we, the, the spark plug is, is a symptom of, yeah, we've seen one RS five that had an issue with plug, uh, with, with plug straps, uh, mm -hmm. being damaged. And that was 100% an injector injector replacement and never that everything was clean and perfect after that uh, so, so keep in mind this is happening on all different tunes yeah that, that we're seeing online um and uh, last last week a dealership tech wrote in saying he's seeing it on stock bone stock cars weekly uh, and then we also have a lot of dealership contacts as well and um, there does appear to be some type of injector issue with with Audi FSIs in general. Now it's not a new issue. This has been happening on B8s. This has been happening going back to Mark V, Mark VI, Mark VII cars uh, do have, you know, occasional injector failing issues. We've seen this here at 034 Motorsport with our own cars, uh, uh, with our uh, company development cars. We have had injectors fail and, and need to be replaced. Thankfully, in every case, the worst thing that happens is a misfire or a melted spark plug and then you replace. We've actually never melted a plug. Yeah, we, we, we haven't. We had a couple of misfire events. We had an injector stuck open on a car. But, but we've had it happen in certain. Like, the other thing is, yes. we have a, we have yeah, yeah. we have two service department locations uh, where we actually modify cars. So we so we we have a lot of data points here at zero three four. One of our competitors has one B nine S four, and they don't do service. So. That's not a lot. Yeah, of we're, data. we're fortunate we get, we get a, lot, a large sample set directly but hands on. In the last three months, we've maybe interacted with this with thirty to forty cars, and we have, you know, good familiar with, familiarity with that. Uh, um, one thing to keep in mind, though, that was part of that question too, is service intervals. You, you know, eight thousand miles on plugs and a seven hundred horsepower. That's not a leader motor. Yeah, that's going to be pretty much expected to be beyond us. A normal service life on life. I, I would. I mean, I I'd agree. say every oil change on a on a mm -hmm. anything over stage two and up, um, I do a set plus is, with it. Um, these are massive amounts of power per per hole. Uh, and this, this is exactly why Audi doesn't sell a 800, 750 horsepower stock V six V three liter motor. Yeah, and and really nobody else does either. 
Um, you even see, you know, four cylinder motors uh, really pushing the horsepower limits up to like four or 450 horsepower on like a two to 2.2 liter four cylinder. That The reason, you know, the factories, you'll see a twin turbo V8 that makes less power than what you guys are making on your V6s. To, to get to that kind of power, you're talking in some cases, twin turbo V12s, things like that, where the factory's adding numbers of cylinders and displacements uh, to bring the specific output from each cylinder down. So I just did a quick search. I, I haven't thought about this for a while, but the, the yeah. most power dense engines out there. Uh, so you're talking like number of horsepower per liter. Mm -hmm. um, looks like right now, from what I can find is a Ferrari 296 GTB. Which is 218 horsepower per liter. Which would equal 650 crank on it. And what's the plug yeah, interval on that car? Yeah, exactly. And that's, I have no idea what that relates to in uh, service intervals, but yeah, probably. It's probably not 100,000 miles. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I think uh, changing your plugs 5,000, 8,000 miles on a TTE A10 car yeah. is pretty much expected. Um, and then, you know, then there's the injector issue, which. Again, there is no spark plug that can deal with a failed injector. Not that you need it to either. So um, I know this is a hot topic online with lots of people chiming in. All the Ferrari's maintenances are in years owned because nobody drives them. Yes. I can't find them. Well, yeah, that's the other thing. Is, <laughs> no one drives those things 10,000 yeah, miles. Yeah, nobody's, nobody's <laughs> driving. But they have a seven-year maintenance plan or, or uh, interval. Um, there's a lot of... So, you know, let's make one statement for anyone who's following this is there, there are some random conspiracy theories being conjured up. Um, there's people making assertions, like they're fact, and they, they're, they're, they're not. So I think. Yeah. And so you've seen too, also to follow up on that, the last couple of failures have been with really, you know, basically brand new plugs and injectors. Yeah, but we don't know the rest of this operating conditions around it. Well, so. br brand, a brand new spark plug will melt just as the same as a old spark plug if the cylinder runs the... Yeah, or if, um, there's, yeah, if there's some mitigating reason why this is happening. There are brand new injectors that seem to be failing right out of the box. It's, I would say it's still a, not a common occurrence. And I think there's a very few vocal people that are that are talking really loudly about it. Um, at 034, we're not going to jump on the latest conspiracy theory or bandwagon assertion or whatever that anyone comes up with. So we're, we're, we have been working on this. We will continue to. We're probably not going to get into the injector market. No, it's going to be a while before we have a, like, if there ever is a 100% concrete yeah. answer to, to, to the, the, the the cause for every one of these um and there's so many variables out there and running conditions and then component health yeah. outside of even the injectors and coils and or plugs themselves uh that's going to be a really tough one to, to pinpoint and again this is such a high output per liter um you've got to have things yeah we're talking 250 horsepower per liter so that's that's approaching the highest output you know ferrari uh motor Normally aspirated Ferrari motor, which is insane, by the way. Uh, T96 is turbocharged. Oh, it is turbocharged. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, that makes more sense. Um, it, usually 100 horsepower per liter on any. Well, those are 218 per liter. So we're over. Oh, those are, that was 218. Yes. Oh, so yeah, we're okay. way over that. Yeah, yeah, way. So, so you're, you're, you're. I'm trying to see how, how, re if there's any more reason. Sorry, sorry. But, but yeah. It's... But yeah, basically, if you have a TTA 10, you're running E85, you have one of the highest specific output motors in the world like higher than race cars you know things like that what, what's an f1 motor those are like 800 horsepower and 1.3 that's that's really yeah, yeah that's, that's, it's, it's coming from that's six that's going down to yeah they're dropping out yeah. yeah from the, the yeah they're, they're, they're fuel flow limited now yeah so you know i think there's some resetting of expectations and a lot of a lot of the same people who are complaining about plugs are asking about full frame 1000 horsepower setups listen a hundred a thousand horsepower daily driver you're going to be changing out plugs even faster and more, more often um and i think this is the thing like you you see these like gtrs out there with 1500 2000 horsepower so there's a there's a koenig zeg with 300 horsepower mm, there you go. Yeah, and, but it's, it has some magical power adder device, I'm sure. 
for like adjustable compression. So it's a five liter motor making 1600 horsepower on E85. Yeah, five liters. But so it's, well, it's per liter, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's still, um, I'm going to assume that has a rather short service interval at that output. Yes, especially with E85. So, you know, I, I just, I, I don't think there's any reason for anyone to freak out. Change your spark plugs. Thankfully, spark plugs are cheap and easy to change. Uh, even injectors, it's it's a pain in the butt. They're they're not that expensive, and thankfully on these B nines, they're easy to change. On four point T, they're much much more work. I think a big thing that's come up from all this is people feeling like stage three isn't safe for these cars anymore. So I I, I I can see the a lot of noise out there, but it is safe. number number wise. It's a there's a lot of cars out there on the this right now, and very few relative uh, issues still. And the number of like actually blown motors is very small, and I think. I guess you have to qualify what safe means. If you're looking for something that's safe to the degree that you're never going to have a plug failure and it's never going to leave you stranded, then I'd say stick to stage one. Mm -hmm. you know, and even then, you're still going to have plug failures. But uh, and, I'm sorry, inje you're still going to have injector failures, which are causing the plug failures. Um, even, even on stage three, it's not a, really a, technically a plug failure in, in most cases that we're seeing. Um, now, if you're talking about blowing a motor, honestly, to make seven, eight hundred horsepower and not blow your motor and have to change your plugs, you know, I come from an era where we we would we would do three dyno pulls and have to change the plugs on an eight hundred horsepower five cylinder, which was like breathing fire. <laughs> you know, that was like a race car. You could not daily drive it. It wasn't streetable. Uh, it was lifting the head gasket constantly. Everything on it was breaking at that power. Um, so I think, you know, the, the expectations uh, are not necessarily, you know, in line with the reality. It, it, yeah. And we talk about that a bunch too, is like yeah. setting, setting just yeah the expectations of what it takes to own a 700 horsepower. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's a, there's a lot of seven, 800 horsepower BMWs out there that are dealing with the same type of issues. Right. They don't have the same injectors as the Audis. So if their injectors are more reliable, no, like, you know more capacity in the fuel system, then that's going to certainly alleviate this stuff. But when you, when you get to this specific level of output, you are going to be consuming, um, plugs, uh, oils and things like that much more often, just simply because of the demand that that's on those components. Yeah. And, and the B9s are getting up in the mileage and, and years on some models now too. So it's going to be one of those, like, it's just a maintenance interval thing too. Uh, which peace of mind is in, replacing injectors at, I don't know, 50, 50 K probably. Stage, stage three at 90,000 miles. And yeah. The thing runs Nick's got 90,000 yeah. on his car. We have, so. we have stage three car here in house with 90,000 miles. That, uh, yeah, that runs seven. Very reliable. That's a daily trip. And towed. I, th I think yes. there's another issue with, uh, and this is a big problem we have today in, in our society and culture with the internet is people just kind of going crazy with anecdotal evidence. So one or two guys have a problem and now all of a sudden it's every single car. Of course, the people that aren't having problems are out driving and they're not in the thread. They're not on there. But the nine guys that have had the problem are all kind of, you know, hyping things up. Uh, we, we saw this with the, you know, the, the cam lifter rocker arm um failures supposedly which are now i mean I've they still pop up here and there but it's again it's such a small amount well, now we're just them, talking about however problems. many cars are out there so. I, I just i just think we have to be careful of making these kind of big sweeping generalized uh <coughs> facts yeah based that that aren't based on real information yeah they have so little yeah. information around them and it's all um just either just guessing um or or you know, very limited amount of data. Someone says, are the failures happening more on ethanol or pump gas? Um, from what we're seeing anecdotally, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. It's not related to, it's not like ethanol is making the injectors fail faster. It's, there's something going on, <coughs> excuse me, with we're, some injectors. Yeah. Um, but it's not as widespread as some people are making. 